Thanks to the Sister Blanco the Asian Sister and today we're reading Saro Nassaro Nalini. This is chapter one, part two. Alright. Glancing sadly at his surrounding, he said, Only shadows of the light may dwell upon us. That is a way and it has always been so. I see, but if I were to become like you, I added imploringly. It will not work. In time we will uncover your true nature, he said reverently. How am I how am I to help you if I, if you won't let me? The prospect of, uh, of getting help saddened the uh, saddened the uh, Before departing he says, Lara Arcan is beyond saving. I have seen the truth with my own eyes, and you should and if you would grant me at least one prayer, please protect me from Arasa. I will do what I, will, I always do my servant, I responded. It was amusing to impersonate to impersonate his goddess. Even though I didn't mean, even though that wasn't my original intention. So like, the else had a voice and he thought it was like his God is talking to him, but it was just like the, uh, like, it was just Nalini. Then she can like, then she can like do telepathy, she can like send her thoughts. So then it, you hear the voice in your head and then you like, you know, if you're like a religious chump, you hear the, you think it's like your God talking to you. Whatever. Unless if you hear the voice on a regular basis. Whatever, move on. The elf had parted his heart confident, and my first conversation with an elf proved successful, yet it did not help me enter the society. Certainly, it seemed useful by my pretending to be his beloved goddess. And this small piece of information gave me a lot to think about, and for what I gathered, the elves were afraid of their god, of their death god. This fear of death is not uncommon. It makes sense that beings with longevity will be far too attached to life. When the silence ended, I left to sleep in my usual spot by the river, and the next day I was awakened by a strange sensation. Sensation. It felt as if two hands were pulling my legs, and I got up with a start and saw the new before me. She urged me to be silent, and once again the elves were investigating the lake. These were warrior elves, wearing glistening armors made of silver, and for weapons some had bows and the leader had a spear. Seeing their glow beneath the sun, I was able to see them coming from a mile away, and I went to hide inside the lake with my mute friend. Mute, not mute, you know, N-E-W-T. The one with the spear stuck to himself, I am still not convinced. Instead, he said to the others, my son wanted me to double check the lake. He's just a small boy, but still, just so that he has his peace of mind. We understand, said the other elves. The two were, uh, were not too convinced. The short period that they had spent outside the forest had made them quite skeptic. And unlike the others, these soldiers did not blindly believe the words of the high elves, and most because they knew the truth about him, whatever that truth may have been. Regardless, they still had to maintain appearance. The spearman entered the water, and like last time he spoke words of magic, and when I saw his face beneath the water, his eyes had a strange mutant green glow. And when he saw me, he reached down towards me, and I decided to see what would happen if they caught me. He grabbed me by my robe and dragged me out of the water with little effort. He was about to spearhead the problem, literally speaking, but one of the younger soldiers detained him. The spearman yelled, you fool, pleading Bleeding, the young man said, let's just see what it is. There's no need to pointlessly shed blood. The others rebuked him by saying, Our kind only survives to ripe old age by being overcautious. Let's kill it first and then we will see what it is. So like, if you want to get to the head forward, they'll kill you first. And let's see what you were doing there. <laughs> no, this goes against our teachings, snapped the young man, placing himself between me and my aggressor. For the stages only apply to our kind. If she's not an elf, <sniffs> snapped the spearman. The young man elf bit his tongue to hold back his frustration. Deep inside he thought, I sometimes wonder. He moved out of the way and he allowed the leader to approach me. With his stand, I removed my hood and allowed them to look about my awesomeness. The leader studied my face and then lowered his weapon. Another aberration, perhaps, commented the young soldier. I still have my doubts, said their leader. His frown burrowed deeply, and he was wondering whether he should kill me or not. The young elf interjected. His holiness did not forgive the life of that other aberrant. The elf departed still unconvinced, and later that night, during quiet time, the young elf came along. 
and he was wearing immaculate white robes, and he carried with him a bag, him a bag made of yarn. As usual, I went to hide in my place where the silence was thickest. From the bag, he got out an apple. In a soft voice, he said, "Come here, little girl." <laughs> he went to feed the he went to feed the little girl. From my from my hidden spot, I said to him, "Dad." In tears, he came towards me, and he got hugged me close to his chest. Still not able to speak, he thought, lies, lies, I can never forgive him. He pushed me back to get a better look at me, and he lowered my hood, and he said, ah. His body grew limp over my, his body felt limped over mine, and his blood bathed me completely. And I saw that from his back, that he, from his back was impaled by arrows. Soon his white robes and my own were tainted with red blood. Someone dressed in black flipped the cords off me. All I could discern in the darkness was his black cape and his pale blue eyes. His gay, he gazed at my face and he commented, doesn't even, look, doesn't even look remotely like her. He added, learn your place girl or else suffer the same fate. I rose from the ground, not roaring my eyes. The man in the darkness ignored me, and he started digging a hole beside me. In no way did he feel threatened by my presence. Is that bro? Hmm. Hey, amen. The grave for his fear was shadowed, yet he did not care. After he was done, he grabbed some fallen leaves to masquerade the grave, and he said a quiet prayer for the victim, and he started departing. I was deeply offended by the man's disdain. And when he departed, the night came alive anew, and I breathed in the night air and tasted the purity of the water. I sat before the lake while trying hard not to think about the assassin and his victim. I almost succeeded until I saw my reflection in the lake. My pale face, my silver hair, and my robes were tainted by were tainted in red blood. I went to the lake to clean myself, yet I hesitated before my bloody hand touched the water. I took out my flute and I played my song, and the searching tempest multiplied its echo. It was complemented by the falling rain and the roaring thunder. And I communicated to my forward fans my command, bring me the assassin alive. I waited for them to do my bidding while I cleaned myself as best I could. And my fairies and my animal friends were assembling around me. Even the mute came to my summons. The new smiled most sinisterly, and like the others, they were aglow with expectation. Historically, we ignored the tempest, and from time to time, the lightning would ignite the darkness, and suddenly the storm quieted down, and even the silence was tense with expectation. It was unlike the silence that appeared twice in, in the day. The two thousand knees were dragging the body of the assassin closer toward me, and the assassin was stopped unceremoniously before my presence. And I made a signal to one of my fans, and he flipped the assassin over, and I played a short tune to paralyze his limbs, and I then rose and took some water from the lake to force him to awaken. Looking back, I realized how silly this was, considering that it started to rain again. Even with all the rain, I still felt the same eerie silence hiding behind each raindrop. Unlike before, the silence had not retreated when the noise returned, and when the elf awoke, his blue eyes were flashing red with anger. And he had the gaze of someone who had just awoken from a nightmare. And his fragmented gaze went from looking at me to looking at my forest friends. Eventually, his will to live overcame his fury. Calming himself, he decided to be diplomatic. Even someone as arrogant as he could realize he was outmatched. And I was able to discern a sneer beneath the mask. In a cocky voice, he said, Well played, girl. I underestimated the influence you had over the forest creatures. Perhaps, I said, returning his cockiness with my own. I sat on top of his chest. Somehow, my pathetic show of strength made the old laughing men la uh, laugh. His laughter was echoed by the silence, and I felt that his stone heart soften a little, smiling benevolently. He asked, Shout, what are you, really? I'm a little human girl, I answered. <laughs> this seemed to confuse the elf even more. He kept thinking to himself that he had been out of touch with the world for far too long. He never imagined that humans had gained such mastery over nature. A uh, time, bro? Uh, five minutes. It had been many centuries since he was so curious about the world beyond the woods. He took another. He took another. He took. He then asked another question. What brings a human girl to this yonder forest? Boredom, I said. Forgetting, Sophia, do humans now speak using telepathy? Again, I recognize another.
another stupid blonde. The frosted agarafondios and I started kicking his side and I started while kicking up the grass. Stupid, stupid. How could I ever do something so basic? Amuse the news said, yes, I was about to ask you about your telepathy as well. When you speak, you don't move your mouth. I surprised my child with emotions and took on a bad already face. I spat on the ground to remove the taste of failure. Before addressing the elf, I chanted softly to myself while rubbing the sides of my head. Ah, time to be diplomatic. Diplomatic. After I finished sucking myself up, I felt a sweet calm wash over me. Facing the elf, I said to him, You are a very bad man and I hate your guts. All beings must... All beings must take lives to survive, but still there, there was no need to slay that man. Nonchalantly, the elf said, you are an outsider. You had no business meddling in matters beyond your understanding. I played my flute that allowed the elf to move around freely. He sat up and he lowered his hood and he removed his mask. His face was idealized and beautiful, no different than the rest of the elf I had seen. As for his eyes, they looked dispassionately at the world. Truly, the flame in his soul had died long ago after years of disappointment. Uh, let's start. <laughs> Sorry, bro. Hey, two minutes and 30 seconds. In a sudden voice, he said, looking up at the sky, How I envy the temerity of you new humans. You had the luxury to play adventure at your age with no regards to the angels. Yes, we all thought we had an eternity, yet it came with a price. Time is relative, even a moment can become an eternity to some, I said sitting down beside him. By now the tension had relaxed, and my friends stayed nearby, but, but started speaking with one another. In a sense, life had returned to the forest. The spirit of the dead elf wandered close to me, noticing my empty assassin. and Where is the little girl of the dead man? Dead, perhaps. I know not of the fate of those who lose their light, he said disheartened. The new saddened the spirit. It slowly departed in the direction of the silence. The silence comforted him, the spirit, and in no time the pain the spirit felt in his heart became nothing. By now the storm had finally cleared up, and the night sky was adorned by the large titan moon. Its glow opaque most of the star, almost like a softer second sun. Sun, the tall, you know, like, you know, sunlight. Sign the Ovas, what happens now? Time, bro? Two minutes, 30 seconds. I haven't decided yet. <laughs> I added, why do elves kill with arrows? Because we're good archers, he said, musing a little. He later corrected himself by saying, elves are supposed to be good archers. You are considered a defective or a sinner if you can't master the bow and arrow. I lay down on the grass and made a sign to my forest friends to go about their business. Most left, aside from the news. And, um, musing a little, I added, I think it has to do with your fear of death. Most of your kind handle problems at a distance or by isolating yourself. The elf's eyes flashed in anger as he said, Elves are no cowards. Smirking, I added, so says the assassin who shot someone in the back who lives in total isolation. Oh, your, your words wound me, he said, putting his hand to his heart. He smiled at, the rea at realizing that I could not tell the difference between thoughts and spoken words. Again, he said, what happens now? Whether you live or die, it all depends on you, I added ominously. I rose and pointed towards the silence. Still a bit confused, the elves started to leave. The silence escorted him out of my territory, and when he departed, my, uh, the nude asked, was it wise to let him go unpunished? Smiling benevolently, I said, we are all victims of circumstances. I kept wondering how my big brother would handle this situation, and when I finally fell asleep, I dreamt of my brother. He was dancing in the hollow mirrors decorated by dragon columns, and his dance partner was a beautiful maiden, a few years his elder. Since she was petite, both were the, they were both relatively the same size, and the maiden wore an immaculate white dress decorated with lilies. When I saw him having such a fun, easy time, it made me feel rather stupid. Alright, that's the end of that chapter, but I'm gonna bless.